I'm sure you've all heard about calories. Most people believe that a calorie is a unit of measurement that shows how much energy we get from the foods and drinks we consume and how much energy we lose while performing physical and intellectual activities. However, albeit present today on almost all the food labels and arguably the favorite unit of energy in common speech and public nutrition education, the nutritional calorie has not been defined anywhere in the scientific nomenclature. The word calorie was first used in physics in the early 1800s, and it was defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a kilogram of water 1 degree Celsius. The calorie became popular in nutrition after scientists tried to determine the energetic value of foods with the help of a device called the calorimeter. The substance to be analyzed was placed inside a container where it was burned with other materials furnishing oxygen. The container in which the sample was burning was placed inside another container filled with water and, as the substance from the inner container was burning, the scientists measured the increase in water's temperature. Now, if we think about it, doesn't really make sense. Because if we would dry out completely any food or drink, all there would be left would be the ash, which cannot be called food. Plus, without water, we wouldn't have any food or drinks in the first place. Nevertheless, this is the reason why water is the only substance that has, indeed, zero calories. And, although water is considered as having no nutritional value, this doesn't mean that it has no energy. According to the earliest calculations made by the French chemist Nicolas Clement, it would take 75 calories to melt a kilogram of ice, or, to convert one kilogram of water into steam would require 650 calories. So, basically, those 2,000 calories a day that you see on the food labels used for general nutrition advice are the equivalent of the energy required to warm up with 1 degree Celsius, the water from a swimming pool, measuring 50 meters long by 20 meters wide and 2 meters deep. However, as you already saw in the previous episode, raising the temperature of a known amount of water depends on the atmospheric pressure and the starting temperature. Thus, when scientists tried to calibrate the modern calorimeters using electrical energy, they encountered different values, so they defined different calories, such as the thermochemical calorie, the 4 degrees calorie, the 15 degrees calorie, the international steam table calorie, and so on. As a result, in 1948, at the 9th General Conference on Weight and Measures, scientists adopted the joule as the unit for work, heat, and energy, avoiding the calorie as far as possible. In 1966, the Joint Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and World Health Organization Expert Committee on Nutrition considered the implications of substituting calories for joules. In 1971, the experts argued that the calorie, as used in nutritional science, has been defined in different ways, which lends to confusion, and all the other branches of science on which the nutritional sciences depend, have already made the conversion to the international system of measurements. Because of this, efforts to retain the calorie as the unit of energy will tend to isolate the nutritional sciences from the advances in the fields of physics and chemistry. The committee required an exact figure of 4.1840 joules for one calorie for those engaged in the research on energy exchange involving calorimetry, while nutritionists and dietitians, who are basically the specialists involved in public education concerning energy balance, were allowed to use a less accurate ratio of 4.19 or even 4.2 joules per calorie. Although the difference between these two values might seem insignificant, keep in mind that when we're referring to the body's energy expenditure, we're talking about millions of calories or thousands of kilocalories. In fact, 
According to the earliest calculations made by the German physiologist Karl von Voigt, a 71-kilogram male who, over a 24-hours period, wasn't allowed to eat any solid food and drank only about 1 liter of water, had an energy expenditure of 2,250,000 calories. According to Wilbur Atwar, the father of modern nutrition research and education, for a man who sleeps eight hours a day, performs very severe muscular labor for another eight hours, and devotes the remaining eight hours of the day to go to and from work, eating, relaxing, etc., the daily energy expenditure would be 6,260 large calories, meaning 6,260,000 small calories, or 6,260 kilocalories. If you are interested in this topic, I strongly recommend David Broward's book, How Many Calories Should We Eat?, published in 2020. You'll learn how the calorie became so popular in nutrition, about the history of the Nutrition Facts label, and why the U.S. government cut down, back in 1969, the energetic requirements for the entire American population, and how we ended up today with 2,000 calories per day used for general nutrition advice, the truth about various claims found on the food labels, why the food manufacturers replaced the fat with sugar, leading to the current global epitome of obesity and diabetes, and many other interesting things regarding nutrition and general health. I place the link in the description, and, also, on my channel, you'll find a series of videos about these controversial topics, and much more, so, if you haven't done it already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Starting in the 1970s, most of the countries that have adopted the international system of measurements, meaning all the countries around the world, except Myanmar, Liberia, and the USA, begun the transition from calories to joules, at 4.1840 joules for a calorie. On the other hand, in the USA, the conversion from the obsolete calorie to joule did not begin, not even after more than a half century, 